Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss about National Commission for Allied and Healthcare Professions Act 2021. I'm Dr. Suresh Badabhat, Professor of Psychiatry, Head of Telemedicine Center, Head of Forensic Psychiatry Unit, working at Nimans, Bangalore. Before I start my presentation, I would like to have a disclaimer. This presentation is for academic awareness and training purpose only. This presentation is not a substitute for professional legal opinion. If you want to have a legal opinion, please do contact an advocate. In this video, I am going to discuss why, what was the need for this legislation, objective of this legislation and also highlights of this legislation. And this video is going to be very helpful for these 56 healthcare professionals covered under this legislation and also people working in the healthcare sector and students currently undergoing training under the healthcare sector. So, my dear friends, let's move on. Healthcare system can only function with the healthcare workers who are properly trained. World Health Organization clearly said improving and accessing healthcare services coverage and realizing the right to the enjoyment of highest attainable standard of health is directly dependent on the healthcare workforce availability, accessibility, acceptability, and quality. Unfortunately, there is a shortage of healthcare professionals across the world. World Health Organization estimates approximately 8 million people are required in healthcare sector by 2030. And my dear friends, that's a challenge, but an amazing opportunity is there. The healthcare professionals, majority are women, that is 60 to 70 percent. And this is a wonderful opportunity to make this service available for many of our women who are there in our country and an amazing employment opportunity. And again, at the national level, we have promised universal health coverage under Aishman Bharat, which has two important pillars. One is health and wellness center at the rural level and tertiary care center cover at the urban area. Now, in both the places, healthcare workforce is required. And again, there is a shortage even at the national level. And to realize this right to access for healthcare, it requires this healthcare should be accessible to everyone, available across the country, affordable to poor, and even if it is required to be free, acceptable to the community, adequate in quantity, and quality ensured. Unfortunately, whenever we talk about healthcare sector, we talk about doctors, nurses, dentists, and maximum psychologists. And we have left huge population of healthcare professionals who are at least 56 healthcare professionals are not been recognized, not been given any platform, neither they are registered nor regulated, entry exit exam is not there, there is no quality control over this institution and hence there is no recognition even outside the country. The doctors, nurses and various other healthcare professionals who are monitored under their respective legislation like doctors have a separate legislation, nurses have separate legislation, dentists, similarly the uh, RCI Rehabilitation Council of India is there and also the Pharmacist Council of India. And these professions have been regulated, monitored, registered. Unfortunately, these 56 healthcare professionals have no standing at this point of time. Unfortunately, this has, this has been a huge lacuna. And whether we like it or not, healthcare profession is becoming advanced day by day and it is becoming more complex and it is becoming highly technical. The doctors nurses need support from various other professionals. And looking back, the Boer Committee in 1946 clearly said, apart from doctor and nurses, the support staff needs to be trained. Again in 1994, the, the government also had planned for a bill. But unfortunately, this did not see the light. Again, in 2007, a paramedical and physiotherapy central council bill was introduced, but it was lapsed. Again, the National Commission for Human Resource for Health bill in 2011 was also introduced. Approximately 70 years has been lapsed, but nothing has happened. Now, in 2021, the new legislation was introduced to recognize various 56 healthcare professionals. And they have been categorized into 10 different categories, such as medical, laboratory and life sciences, 
trauma, burn care, surgical anesthesia related technology, physiotherapy professionals, nutrition science professionals, ophthalmic science professional, occupational therapy professionals, community care, behavioral health science and other professionals, medical radiology, imaging and therapeutic technology professionals, medical technologist and physician associates, health information management and health informatics professionals. So these 10 categories have been categorized and 56 healthcare professionals have been recognized under the new legislation. This huge gap needs to be filled to make sure our health ecosystem is complete, comprehensive and a holistic healthcare can be given. Otherwise, the healthcare sector will be provided only by two people, doctor and nurse, which is simply impossible in the current era. The reason being is healthcare is becoming more and more advanced technologically and also becoming more complex and complicated. And the available doctor, nurse and also various other health professionals need to work together as a team to give a holistic care. Hence, these 10 new categories which have been formed to recognize 56 professionals, they need to be having these institutions need to be uh, monitored, need to be regulated, need to be registered, minimum standards has to be given and appropriate inspection has to be done. At the same time, for the professionals, the education for that entry and exist, exit exam has to be planned and also the curriculum standardization has to be done. Core competencies, skills, course duration and update of skills has to be done. Registering professionals, what they can do and what they cannot do, task shifting has to be planned and their professional ethical conduct has to be clearly planned. And of course, research is very essential. Looking at all these objectives, please do remember, currently the healthcare sector is highly fragmented. There are 56 different healthcare professionals who are not been recognized and they have not been registered. Unfortunately, various sensitive data which are available in the healthcare sector is with these 56 healthcare professionals. They need to be recognized, registered, regulated and monitored. At the same time, their professions, professional career with some of them have been having only six months training program. Some of them have three years. Some of them have six years. This need to be recognized, regulated and a uniform standards has to be implemented. Hence, this new legislation is going to bring, bring a paradigm shift in the healthcare sector. Not only that, this legislation is going to be with the standard of ILO, International Labour Organization standard. International standard classification of occupations, ISCO code has been clearly taken into account and these professionals have been also coded with the international standard because these professionals, once they are regulated, registered, then they can work in the international forum also. The international will recognize once we have a appropriate legislation for maintaining minimum standards, core competencies, skills and also monitoring their ethical regulation and behavior. The legislation National Commission for Allied and Healthcare Profession Act 2021 was passed in the parliament. The president gave assent on 28 March 2021. This was the much required legislation which has 8 chapters and 70 sections. The preamble Basically, the objective of legislation has been clearly spelled out. This act provides regulation and maintenance of standards of education and services by allied and healthcare professions, assessment of institutions, maintenance of a register, creation of a system to improve access, research and development and adoption of latest scientific advancement and for matters connected here. The preamble is very clear regulation and maintenance of the education and services of the allied and healthcare profession, assessment of these institutions which are providing these degrees, maintenance of the register of all these professionals and creation of a system for research. So, with this objective, this legislation was implemented. Chapter 1 talks about preliminary and definitions. Let's discuss about the definition because majority of the discussion and also ignorance is in this chapter. Let's understand the definition of allied health professional. See, allied health professional means an associate, technician or technologist who is trained to perform any technical, 
and practical tasks to support understand the word support to diagnose and treatment of illness disease injury or impairment and to support the implementation of any healthcare treatment and referral plan recommended by medical nursing or any healthcare professional so this is the technical aspect of the definition of allied health professional but there is an educational requirement the educational requirement which clearly says who has obtained any qualification of diploma or degree under this act the duration of this degree should be 2000 hours spread over a period of two years to four years and divided into various semester so my dear friends so allied health professional has a two important component under the definition one is the technical skill which they are going to support the diagnosis and treatment of an illness disease injury or an impairment and also referral at the same time it also clearly mentions the requirement of training 2000 hours spread over a period of two to four years so this is the definition of allied health prof allied health professionals but at the same time the legislation also brings in a another definition healthcare professional so healthcare professional means a scientist therapist or other professional who studies advises researches supervises or provides preventive curative rehabilitative therapeutic or professional professional promotional health services so this is the technical aspect now coming to the educational aspect who has obtained any qualification of degree under this act the duration of which not be less than 3600 hours spread over a period of three years to six years divided into various specific semesters so this is healthcare professional definition so these are basically scientist therapist or professionals who studies and advises researches supervises and involved in preventive curative to rehabilitative and therapeutic process coming to the qualification of allied and healthcare qualification the qualification also has been clearly said it has to be recognized a diploma or a degree possessed by an allied and healthcare professional through regular learning mode that's the clear word has been used under this legislation and any additional recognized courses which can be recommended further it also talks about these allied and healthcare institutions who are who are going to provide the degrees these are educational or research institutions please remember these are educational or research institutions which grants a diploma or undergraduate postgraduate or doctoral doctoral degree or any other post degree certification in allied and healthcare professional under this act so these all these educational institutions will be recognized under this legislation with this it clearly says allied and healthcare professional it covers both allied health professionals or healthcare professionals under this act so it is not just allied health professionals it is basically allied and healthcare professionals so there are two important the professionals have been recognized under this legislation at the same time we know at the rural level at the primary healthcare center we require huge number of healthcare professionals the more the degrees and more the qualification many people will not go to the rural area even we have adequate numbers of healthcare professionals they will be concentrated in urban area the rural area will be deprived hence there is a need for task task shifting and this task shifting will be done by the allied healthcare professionals and healthcare professionals this is basically the process whereby specific task are moved where appropriate to related allied and healthcare professionals specialized in those tasks by reorganizing the health workforce efficiently for improved healthcare it's basically task shifting is a very well known phenomena and also which is going to provide quality healthcare because these healthcare professionals are going to provide in provide care in the absence of doctors and nurses especially under uh, under the ayushman bharat in health and wellness center and also it talks about various recognized categories which i spoke about 56 healthcare professionals which have been recognized under this category they are placed in the schedule which is in the part of the end of the legislation let's discuss about the schedule because otherwise you will not be able to understand who are these allied health professionals and healthcare professionals let's move into this schedule 
This schedule clearly talks about various 10 recognized categories. Talks about allied health professionals, allied healthcare professionals, and also international standard classification of occupations code also has been given to each specific professionals as per the ILO. The first and the foremost category is medical laboratory and life sciences. In this, it talks about life science professionals like biotechnologist, biochemist, cell, cell genetist, microbiologist, and molecular biologist, which are non-clinical. Basically, they are not from MBBS category. That's what it means. And also molecular genetist. So these are the people who come under life science professionals. At the same time, there is one more group which talks about medical laboratory science professionals. That is basically cytotechnologist, forensic science technologist, which have been doing an amazing job in prevention of crime in and also at the same time identifying the criminals who have perpetrated the crime at the histotechnologist, hematotechnologist and medical lab technologist. So these come under the medical laboratory and life sciences. Second group is or the categories trauma, burn care and surgical anesthesia related technology. This is clearly which talks about trauma and burn care professionals. These are advanced care paramedics, burn care technologist, emergency medical technologist, whom we call it as paramedics. At the same time, one more category has been placed, surgical and anesthesia related technology professions. Basically, these are anesthesia assistant technologists, which are there in Western country, operational theater technologist, endoscopy and laparoscopy technologists. The third group is physiotherapy professionals. Basically, here the physiotherapy professionals comes under there. The fourth one is nutritional science professionals. They are basically dietitians, including clinician, clinical dietitian and food service dietitian and also nutritionist, basically public health nutritionist, sports nutritionist. These are the people who come under the fourth category. Fifth category is ophthalmic science professionals, basically optometrist, ophthalmic assistant and vision technicians. The sixth category is occupational therapy professional. Basically, we call it as occupational therapists. Coming to the seventh, which is highly required in public health, that is community care, behavioral health sciences and other professionals, which has important three categories, which talk about community care, which talks about environment protection officer, ecologist, community health promoters, occupational health and safety officers, basically inspectors. At the same time, there is a other healthcare professional which talks about podiatrist, palliative care professionals, movement therapist including art, dance, movement therapist or recreational therapists. Along with this, there is another uh, the category C is behavioral health science professionals. Here the psychologist do come under here. But please do remember, the legislation has clearly kept the clinical psychologist under the ambit of Rehabilitation Council of India under the respective legislation. Only psychologists come here. Behavioral analyst, integrated behavioral health counselors, health educators and counselors including disease counselor, diabetes educators, location, lactation uh, consultants, social workers which include medical social worker, psychiatric social worker including clinical social worker. At the same time, we also require HIV counselors, family planning counselors and mental health support workers. And here the legislation clearly says instead of, instead of using mental health, please do use behavioral health which has less stigma. At the same time, eight category is basically for medical, medical radiology, imaging, therapeutic technology professionals, which includes medical physicist, nuclear medicine technologist, radiology imaging technologist, which is diagnostic uh, medical radiographer, MRI, CT radiographer, mammographer and diagnostic medical sonographers and also radiotherapy technologist and dosimetrist. So these are the various uh, the medical radiology related uh, supported uh, professionals. Coming to the ninth category, medical technologists and physician associates. Here the very clearly talks about biomedical and medical equipments technology professions like biomedical engineers and medical equipment technologist as the medical uh, industry is growing and the new technology has been introduced. We require engineers to maintain the equipments, 
training and also the implementation of those uh, important diagnostic procedures therapeutic procedures are required hence engineers are also have been accommodated at the same time physician associates and physician assistants like which are available in uk us where they are uh, helping supporting the physicians they are highly required because nowadays doctors especially in the corporate hospitals even in the public health sectors they are burnt out they require assistance so those physician assistants have been recognized under this legislation at the same time cardiovascular neurosciences and pulmonary technology professionals have also been uh, recognized they are like basically cardiovascular technologists perfusionists respiratory technologist ecg echo technologist at the same time eeg emg and sleep lab technologist various uh, physician assistants have been clearly recognized under this legislation and also renal technology professionals like dialysis therapy technologist or urology technologist are required because the urologist will not be able to sit along with the patient during the dialysis we require urology technologists at the same time who are going to maintain those equipments which are required for the dialysis coming to the last part of the uh, category which has been recognized under the uh, legislation is health information management and health informatic professionals recently the telemedicine guidelines has been passed under that again we are going to have a health information management professionals include medical record analyst health information management technologist clinical coder and medical secretary and medical transcriptionist which have been they are working in the insurance company but they have not been uh, given any uh, regulation and also been recognized now under this legislation all these 10 categories which are going to recognize 15 56 healthcare professionals are brought under the ambit of this legislation please do remember this schedule is not a watertight compartment the legislation gives complete freedom to amend by the central government this list this list under the section 70 clearly says that by notification this list of schedule can be amended either addition of the list or the deletion of the list can be done without going to make a major change in the legislation chapter 2 talks about the national commission for allied and healthcare profession this is the apex body which is going to regulate and also advise and monitor this legislation this body has various constitution and composition of this commission this commission has a chairperson vice chairperson ex officio members biennial rotation four members by ex officio every two years they will be on rotation part-time members for the commissioners are there two persons from charitable institutions are also being clearly mentioned and this commission is going to meet at least four times a year at least it is may it can meet many times at the same time function of this commission is very well clearly documented they will regulate the allied and healthcare profession basically it talks about education how the education system should be there what should be the intake criteria what should be the output criteria of this education professional services how the service and services should standard should be there professional conduct code of ethic ethics and etiquette has to be clearly mentioned if there is any violation of ethics their name can be removed register registration of these professionals a central register and the state register will be maintained similar to doctors and nurses scope of the practice also very clearly been uh, documented here institution standards each course standards and also entry and exit of the exam so these allied and health professional uh, course students will have a single entry exam and exit exam across india this will occur over a period of time till then there will be a interim commission will be also be formed interim commission will be formed immediately after this legislation but at the same time the full commission will be placed after some time maybe after one or two years once this commission starts working this commission also plans for forming 10 councils I talked about 10 different categories so there will be 10 councils under section 10 this clearly says these councils will be recognized for each of this profession which has a precedent and also four members and a lot uh, more than 24 members will be there representing each profession in recognized categories so there are 10 categories and these professional councils will be made like uh, physiotherapy council will be there at the same time behavioral science council will be there so these 10 councils will be there and these 10 councils will regulate each of these education 
and also the, also the institutions and also registration what are the requirements inspection of these institutions will be done by the professional council please remember there is a center and the state at the center it is more of policy making making rules making regulations and more of advisory the implementation occurs at the state level so at the national level the work will be more of advisory but at the state the maximum work occurs because this healthcare is a state subject and it is highly fragmented at the national level it simply it cannot be monitored and each state has their own requirement hence the complete uh, independence has been given to the state and the federal structure has been clearly maintained under this legislation at the section 12 there is also a national allied and healthcare advisory council this council will be consist of all the uh, chairpersons from the state council will be here and also the principal secretary dealing with medical education of every state and union territory will be part of this council this council will be headed by same the national commission chairperson and vice chairperson and other members and again so again the federal structure is maintained because there need to be a coordination between the national level and the state level though the national level is not the implementing agency the implementing agency is at the state level hence the state members are also been that state chairpersons have been taken into the national allied and healthcare advisory council so this council will be meeting and also discussing the problems at the state level and the regulation of these allied healthcare professionals will be done seamlessly without any problem coming to the chapter 3 this is where the implementation of this legislation occur that is there will be a council at each state and union territories will be taken into the respective states that is state allied and healthcare council now these unit territories will not be monitored by the national it will be monitored by the respective state which are there in the uh, union territory for example chandigarh will be monitored most probably by the punjab at the same time pondicherry will be monitored by the tamil nadu state council so this kinds of clearly the national level clearly said that it is the state subject we will lead to the we will leave it to the state to decide hence the state allied and health council will be formed at each state which clearly uh, forms again the chairperson will be there that chairperson will be also be part of the national advisory board and at the same time this state council will form four boards in every state these four boards are basically for undergraduate for postgraduates and also for allied and healthcare professional assessment and rating board so the rating occurs for each of the institutions and finally professional ethics and registration board any complaint against these uh, allied healthcare professionals will be taken up by the ethics committee under this board and the complaint will be dealt here under this board so similar to national medical commission here also there are four boards for education of UG, PG and also for the professional institution rating and also for the ethics and registration board. Coming to the important other chapters are recognition and reciprocity where outside the country qualification if it has been done a person comes from other country and he has done one of the therapy or one of the qualification he has done and he wants to get it recognized the legislation is very clear about that if that country recognize our pro, uh, profession or our educational qualification that will be same will be dealt under this legislation if that country does not recognize our country will not recognize but however if he wants to work in india that means he has to undergo certain qualification examination at the same time registration of the institution how it has to be done at the state level has been clearly mentioned and also the professionals will be registered under the state and that will be uh, transferred to the national level and an online registration of these professionals will be made available and this professional registration will be available to all hospitals to all the governments so that we know yes this person passed on the day this date and he belongs to this category and he is providing these services and coming to the important chapter although uh, which has been a very controversial offenses and penalties which have been uh, taken very seriously under this legislation if a person is working without registration for first time it will be 50000 rupees as the penalty subsequently it will be 6 months imprisonment up to 1 lakh fine will be there with or without fine can be considered and also misuse of these titles if somebody is not being recognized but is using the titles of these allied healthcare professional the first time one lakh rupees is the fine and second time if he continues to do this is one year imprisonment with 
fine with or without fine up to 2 lakh rupees has been clearly dealt at the same time under section 58 and if person has been his name has been removed from the registry and he does not surrender his certificate that means immediately he has to pay 50000 if he delays in submitting his registration certificate back every day 5000 rupees penalty will be there and if he delays more he has to pay more penalty Coming to section 59, whoever contravenes the other part of the legislation or the other section, one to three year imprisonment with or without fine up to one lakh to five lakh rupees. So it has been taken very seriously regarding the offenses and penalties under this legislation. My dear friends, please do remember right to access to healthcare has been promised under our constitution and also we need to uphold this. For this, we need to reach to the rural area. For that, Aishman Bharat plays a very important role to reach the grassroots level. We require healthcare professionals, not only just doctor and nurses, we require other 56 healthcare professionals who are going to work at various parts of the country, at the various grassroots levels and also at the tertiary level. And hence, we need to support this legislation. And of course, there will be some shortcomings, but at the same time, the best should not become the enemy of the good. Here we have a legislation over a period of time we are going to fine tune it and at the same time over a period of time this will be implemented and this will be at the larger good. At the same time we require to recognize, register and give a platform for allied healthcare professionals. Hence this legislation gives a regulatory body for regulating them, monitoring them, entry and exit exams for the healthcare professionals and institution has been clearly maintained under this legislation. At the national level, there are three important bodies which have been formed under this legislation. One is National Commission for Allied and Healthcare Profession, which is the center body, which is going to be more of advisory and regulatory and also a commission as a commission which is going to function. And the second one is important is professional council for every profession. There are 10 professional councils will be formed under the legislation. However, the more numbers can be formed depending upon the number of amendments to the schedules, the number of councils will be formed. At the same time, at this point of time, there are 10. At the same time, National Allied and Healthcare Advisory Council, these are all state members, state chairpersons have been taken into the central council so that the seemingly the coordination can occur between the national and the state. And the state plays a very crucial role in this legislation. Without state implementing, nothing can be done. If the state is going to support, this legislation is going to be robust because the implementation is at the state level. Health is a state subject. Hence, the state allied and healthcare council is going to play a major role under this legislation and this council is going to form four boards across the country at each state they are ug board that is undergraduate board postgraduate board assessment and rating board for these institutions ethics and registration board for the uh, professionals my dear friends this is high time and there is an immense demand for qualified healthcare professional across the globe and also in india we need to uphold right to healthcare under the Aishman Bharat and this legislation provides all necessary support for the affordable health care to the people even at the grassroots level. We have reached Mars but we have not reached the rural population. This allied health care professional bill is going to increase our health care professionals and Indian health care professionals can play an excellent role in the international forum and hence this legislation is going to make a paradigm shift in the provision of health care sectors not only in India across the world. Thank you very much for giving your valuable time. Stay safe.